Yo, yo, what's the word? It's Vinny Paz, Box Cutter Pazzy. My man Edgar's in the building. This is my buddy Edgar. I don't do the pit bull thing, man. It's not my twist. It's my little buddy Edgar over here. He's going to chill with me doing this little this little video I got right here. Um, yeah, I'm in the middle of... Um, I'm in the middle of writing for Heavy Metal Kings, uh, Ill Bill and Myself, Part 2. Uh, the record's called Black God, White Devil. Uh, we're probably like seven songs deep. Uh, this is the rhyme book I'm using, the rhyme book I'm using for, for this record. Yes, I still use a rhyme book. I know it's uh, some dinosaur shit, but I can't get into the, into the phone thing, man. I don't understand it. It's not my twist. Um, but yeah, so I'm in the middle of writing that, um, I'm not really good at this, uh, I'm not technologically inclined, so hopefully y'all can bear with me here, hopefully y'all can hear me and, uh, and see me, um, as, uh, I'm a long, I'm a lifelong De La Soul fan, and, um, I was blessed enough to play with them about 12, 13 years ago, and they're really good brothers, but the reason I bring them up is, I'm on their mailing list, and they have a new record coming out called De La Soul and the Anonymous Nobody, and uh, I was just moved by the fact that I've heard a few joints that were incredible. Um, I've also uh, seen the artwork, and it just moved me that these dudes are pushing 50 years old, and um, they're still doing innovative and creative things, so... That moved me, and I just wanted to shout Dela out because I've been a fan since 87, 88, um, when they first dropped 12 inches. Um, so to still be around almost 30 years later and still innovating um, reminds me that I don't have to go anywhere if I don't want to. So, you know, um, so salute to Dela and salute to that new album. Um, yeah, also in the process of writing, um, I typically don't. I don't listen to much hip hop during the writing process because I don't want to be influenced um, by other MCs, you know, even if it's subconscious. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm listening to a bunch of records um, over the course of this writing process. Uh, I love this record um, by Dark Funeral, The Secret to the Black Arts. I love this record. I'm listening to this heavy. Let me see what else I got here. Come on, man. Classic. Uh, this record was a game changer. Um, basically created a genre. Um, what else do I got here? This record's dope. I've been listening to this a lot. Blood Ceremony. The Eldred's Dark Blood Ceremony is dope. Female fronted band. They're really dope. This record's hard. Um, oh, wow. Look at this. Yeah, I've been listening to this a lot. Game changer. If you don't own this record or have any collection, I don't know what to tell you. Um, this is everything went black. This is um, this is before Rollins. Um, this is the um, the Johnny Goldstein era, the Chavo era. There's great shit on this record. I've been listening to this a lot. Let me see if I can fix the camera a little bit. It seems to be seems to be giving me problems. Hopefully y'all are getting all this. Um, this record, You Prefer an Astronaut by Hum. I love this record. Uh, this record came out in around 95. Um, this is a dope, a dope piece of vinyl too. Uh, I've been checking this out a lot during the writing process. But again, dope. Uh, my go-to, two of my go-to bands, number one. I don't think I got to say much about this record. My number two go-to band historically, boom. Um, I love this record, The Omega Sessions. Uh, all classic songs on here uh, from Bad Brains, but different recordings of them. Um, another classic that I've been listening to a little bit more lately, uh, Dark Throne, Under a Funeral Moon. I love this record, uh, raw in purest form. And uh, I don't got to say anything about this. Game changer. 
I can listen to the intro. Uh, again, I apologize about the camera. I can listen to the intro and the first song, self-titled Black Savage song, forever. Um, I've been listening to those records a lot during, the, during writing my thoughts, you know? Um, something else, this is about the, uh, this is about the third time I've read this. Uh, again, I'm not good with this camera. I don't know if I'm filming all this. Hopefully y'all can see it. Um, this book, So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star, Jacob Slichter, he was the drummer in the band that had that song, Closing Time. I don't know if y'all remember that. It was a big song uh, in the 90s, a huge song. These dudes, um, uh, the, 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 it's how, So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star, uh, How I Machine Gunned a Room Full of Record Executives and Other Tales from a Drummer's Life. Uh, he didn't machine gun executives, but this is a precautionary tale, man. Um, this dude basically saw it all, saw the world. Uh, these guys made a bunch of money, and this book talks about the fall from grace and ending up coming full circle and basically having to go back to a regular job. Now, me, I've been blessed to live. My only job ever has been to make music. Um, I've been blessed to do that. I, I I pinch myself every day that I've been able to do that. And uh, so for me, this is a book that reminds me to always stay humble and uh, always be good to people. And uh, and if you if you want a career in music, I suggest you don't pursue it. I suggest that you get an education uh, because it's not meant for everybody. Um, history has proven that. But if you want a job in music, read this book and it might change your mind. Um, so yeah, this is like a, my th my third time reading this, just just to remind myself. Um, moving on, I don't want to take up too much of y'all time. Um, a lot of heads have asked me to talk about boxing on my podcast, Broad Street Breakdown Podcast. Again, my apologies. Apologies with the camera. I apologize. I'm not too good with this shit. Um, so I, I don't really talk about boxing on the podcast, basically because the other fellas aren't really into it. So I don't want to occupy their time with that. So I'll try to touch on it a little bit here. Um, there's a good card on Showtime, on Showbox this Friday. Um, so uh, Showbox is, is, an, uh, is, is, a, is a series for up and coming fighters. Um, so I'm not really gonna get too much into that card because a lot of y'all probably don't know the fighters on there. But check it out if you want to get uh, a little, you know, see some up and coming good fighters uh, facing other good up and coming fighters. Showbox uh, on Showtime this weekend. But uh, I'm gonna before I let y'all go, I just want to talk about my man Errol Spence. Uh, Errol Spence is uh, one of my favorite young fighters right now. Um, power in both hands. Um, defensively responsible. Uh, smart kid, high, high ring IQ, uh, does all the right things in there, polite kid, respectful. Um, he's fighting a gentleman named Leonard Bundu, who fought Keith Thurman. Uh, I'm not a fan of Keith Thurman, but I do um, respect the fact that he can pop. He's got, he's got some pop in his hands, and uh, Bundu went the distance with him. So that means he's got a sturdy chin. Now, that also tells me that Spence is going to want to get get him out of there to show that I hit harder than Thurman. I'm better than Thurman. Um, that's the way that a real fighter behaves uh, to prove that he's the best. There's no reason to be in the game unless you want to be the best. So um, while I know that uh, Errol Spence won't have problems with Bundu, Bundu is 33, one, and two, he's got two draws. Um, the record is a little bit deceiving because he hasn't really fought anyone. Like I said, he fought Thurman, went the distance with Thurman, and um, and that shows me that he's got a sturdy chin because Thurman can crack a little bit. I believe that Spence is going to want to get him out of, out of there. I know that he's going to want to get him out of there. And um, again, my apologies for the camera. He's going to want to get him out of there. And um, 